Kendrick will kick off. Amp Lee and rookie Harold Morrow are deep for the Vikings. And Morrow returning from the goal line for Minnesota. And Morrow gets it past the 20 yard line. And that is where the Vikings will go to work. Brad Johnson. He's had a terrific record as a starter. Third rated passer in the NFL. He'll be the quarterback, the offensive line, Todd Stucey, pro bowler Randall McDaniel, Jeff Christie at center with David Dixon and Corey Stringer, Leroy Hoard and Charles Evans, the running backs, Chris Carter and Jake Reed, the wide receivers, and rookie Hunter Goodwin is the tight end. On first down, a play action fake. Johnson going deep, and Chris Carter cut off his route. Incomplete out of bounds, and that'll bring up second down. For the Green Bay Packers, who have allowed the fewest points, the front four, the linebackers, and the secondary, Evans, Robinson, Leroy Butler, he's a pro bowler, and Craig Newsom, who's having an outstanding year. Minnesota Vikings offense has played very, very well, and the reason they've played better from the middle of the season is, is Leroy Horn, number 44. He took over when Robert Smith went out with an injury, and he has played very well. Here is Horde's first carry of the game. He gets a few yards, and that'll bring up third down and six. So you look at this Viking offense, and you say, why are they better? You say Leroy Horde's better. But they did something that very few teams can do. This coaching staff was able to switch its philosophy, and they went from a pure passing team to a running football team and they were able to get it done, and it fitted nicely with what Brad Johnson does well, and that's the play-action pass. Amp Lee, their third down back, and Chris Walsh, their extra-wide receiver in the lineup, on third and six. Johnson's pass is caught by David Frisch, the tight end, and he's tackled well short of first-down yardage by Wayne Simmons. So much was talked about of this Green Bay Packer team having a fast start. And when you're on defense first, the fastest way to get a start is to stop them three and out. Mitch Berger will kick, and Desmond Howard, who has returned punts for three touchdowns this year, back deep for the Packers. Good kick by Berger, and... Desmond Howard calling for the Bearcats at the 34 following a 38-yard kick by Mitch Berger. Well, Brett Favre, with 36 touchdown passes, he threw 38 a year ago, leading the Packers with Wilkerson, Taylor, Winters, Timmerman, and Dobson. Wilkerson, the 10-year veteran, starting in left tackle for John Michael. Edgar Bennett and William Henderson are the running backs. Antonio Freeman and Andre Rise in the receivers and Mark Shimura the tight end. Packers have won five in a row and have won 15 straight here at Lambeau Field. And a play fake and the pass is caught by Freeman and a flag is down. Hey, look at that. Look at that showed up. We got a new little doohickey here. Now you got to know when there's a flag, they're going to show us. And the penalty will be against the Vikings and Red Cashin, who's working his last regular season game after a 25-year career. Offside on the defense in the middle of the line. Five yards, still first down. Vikings defensively, and the strength of this team is their front four. Martin Harrison, John Randall, especially Randall, Jason Fisk, and Fernando Smith up front. Dixon Edwards, Jeff Brady in the middle, and Darryl Talley, the linebacker. In the secondary, Dwayne Washington and Corey Fuller, the cornerbacks, Orlando Thomas, and Robert Griffith, the safety. First down and five following the penalty, and a big game by Edgar Bennett with a big hole up the middle into Viking territory, 15 yards and a first down. Now you see the block by the fullback, Henderson? That was the whole key. William Henderson just lowered the boom right on the back. It opened right up. This is going to show up. Watch this block in the hole. Boom, right there. That opens that crease inside, and he comes right through. When you get this kind of a hole inside, running right at Jeff Brady, you got yourself a big chance. 
If the Packers have their running game going, their passing game is even that much more effective. From the 46, quick count by far. Running out of the pocket and looking for a help. And the pass caught by Henderson. William Henderson, the fullback. And a big gain and a first down inside the 30. That was a 19-yard pickup with Washington and Brady on the tackle. You talk about watching up Brady, all that stuff. There's the guy. That's the play. Watch Brett Favre. There's coverage down the field. There's no place to go with the football. So now you have to buy time. Use your feet. Now you come back and you wait. See that little pump he gave him? Just enough to commit the backer to the top side. And then he's able to find it. That's a big completion, but it all comes down to Favre's ability to buy time. Packers moving, first down on the Minnesota 28. And we have moving and another penalty marker down, and there is that flag. Yeah, I like that thing right there. See that? Should have done it in pig Latin, though. It would have been more appropriate for ag flag. Before the snap, false start. Number 73 on the offense. Aaron Five Taylor, yards, still first the down. left guard, and a penalty against the Green Bay Packers. Brett Favre has struggled somewhat against the Minnesota Vikings in his career. With nine touchdowns and ten interceptions, and he was sacked seven times in their first meeting in September. 18 sacks. That's amazing versus the Vikings. They've really been able to get after Part of that they're addressing right now with Bruce Wilkerson, their left offensive tackle. And they got to watch where John Randall lines up. First down and 15. Dorsey Levins gets running room off right tackle. And Levins gets inside the 20, short of the first down by only a yard. Orlando Thomas on the play. I'll tell you something right now. The Packers have the Vikings off balance. And they have them on their heels. Frank Winters has his helmet off. Holding his eyes. They got that left eye. Well, he's not a happy camper. And they're not happy to begin with. All week long, they've been on this Minnesota Viking defense. You're going to watch Winters at the end. He's coming in. And he hits him at the end. Has a good you, point. you can forget Mike Holmgren and all that. You can expect from that shot right there, I guarantee he will be fine. That's uncalled for, should not be in this game. You're absolutely That's right. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable Edwin. that he just went and poked him right in the eye. You can't do this. Look at this. Right in the face. Corey Fuller. That's unbelievable he to me. poked his eye. And Mike Holmgren and the Packers have to be more enraged than anything Jeff Brady said leading up to this game. Edgar Bennett got the first down, and now the Packers have a first down on the 16-yard line, and a very impressive opening drive for them. Here is Dorsey Levens, and Levens has tackled a fine play by Robert Griffith coming up from the secondary, and a loss of two on the play. That's an excellent play by Griffith, and a nice job by their front. Because they were able to bounce everything out to the outside. And what Griffiths does very well is he gets to the ball. He's a good tackler. It's one of the strengths of this defense. You know, you know what you have in John Randall, but their secondary plays very well. Look, you make the decision, now attack. See, and then to finish it is to make the play. Griffiths does that very well. The entire secondary is a good tackling group. This is the sixth play of the drive, second down and 12. Far to throw up the middle, and the pass is caught by Mark Shimura, and the tight end may have another first down. It'll be close. Pete Bursich, the linebacker, making the tackle. Well, the Packers wanted to come out and get a fast start. They wanted to send a message to the rest of the league that, yeah, we haven't been able to come out and have the starts, but we're capable. And so they wanted to come out against this Minnesota Viking team and go right down the field and score in their first possession. They're not going to get that done unless their offensive line is able to play well and protect far. Particularly that left tackle. Here is the measurement, and uh, if it is a first down, we'll hear a familiar call from Red Cashin. Very close. 
And it's about an inch. That's all. We're going to miss Red Cashin because he has been one of the more popular officials. Started as a line judge. 25 years. He's out of Texas as a referee. And he refereed last year's Super Bowl. You know why I always liked Red Cashin? Red Cashin never lets a game get bigger than him. He's always in control. I love him as a player, and he's fun now as a broadcaster, but his games never get out of control. It'll be third down and an inch for the Packers, who have controlled the ball impressively, with 8.39 remaining in the first quarter, no score. Ball is at the seven, and a quarterback sneak, and that'll be a first down to the five. The big parts of this Packer offense, and this is a departure. Bruce Wilkerson, who's a right tackle, they switched him over to the left tackle. The left tackle spot for this Packer offense has been killing their offense all year long. John Michael, the rookies come in, he's tried to he's tried to give it a go. Brown, the 68, he tried to give it a go. Rutgers retired in midseason. They have to get that position settled for them to make their playoff and Super Bowl run. That's a big hole that the Packers have to worry about. Here is Edgar Bennett. Touchdown, Packers. That's just power football. They just did what the rest of the league says they can't do. They just went power right at that Minnesota Viking front seven. Instead of the finesse off tackle stuff, blew it right up the middle. That is only Edgar Bennett's second touchdown rushing of the season. He gives the ball to someone in the crowd and Chris Jackie on for the extra point. It is good. And the Green Bay Packers have already sent a message to the Minnesota Vikings as they have taken an early 7 to nothing lead. This week's Oscar Mayer and Best With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. By the new Coors Light Wide Mouth Can, tap the Rockies with a smoother pour. And by the Braun Flex Integral, designed to perform better. Watch Jeff Brady, but he leaves. There's nothing there. Heck, William Henderson has nobody to block to the safety. Edgar Bennett just jumps right in. Very impressive eight-play, 66-yard scoring drive, and the Packers with good running game in that drive. Capped by Edgar Bennett's five-yard touchdown run. Craig Hendrick kicking off for the second time, and Harold Morrow, the rookie, returning and slips on the new side and gets short of the 20-yard line. Bernardo Harris made the stop, and so we'll take a break. The Vikings go on offense for the second time when we come back. A beautiful sight, so oh, we're happy to know. That's still, that's, that's unfathomable to me that somebody would poke somebody in the eye like that again. Vikings with a first down on the 18-yard line. Leroy Horde bounces off a couple of defenders and is stopped for about no gain on the play. There is Winters having his eye treated, and uh, you were right, a blatant poke by Corey Fuller. You know, the worst part is he wasn't able to get his curl. He put his hand up in the middle. Fuller just <laughs> just pokes him right in the eye. I'm telling you, you know, it's amazing to me that there are not more eye injuries in the National Football League. Now, Donnie Mosbar, the center from the Raiders, lost his eye last year and is now out of football because of that. Second and down to nine. Pass to Chris Carter. And he is stopped at the 20-yard line, and George Koontz came in to make the play, and that will bring up third and long for Minnesota. Dick, if you listen to Howie Long in the pregame, he said it right, exactly what, what the uh, Green Bay Packers are doing. He said, take away Leroy Horde and make Brad Johnson beat you. And that's exactly what the Packers are going to do today. They're going to try to take Leroy Horde away and make this kid, Brad Johnson, who's played pretty well, but they don't know exactly what he is. He's finding out himself what he is. Third down and an eight from the 20. And it looked like Todd Stucy might have uh, been guilty of a false start. There is that flag the snap, indication. False start, number 73 on the offense. You know, the other thing, Matt, is that Brad Johnson, who played at Florida State, said this week that he has never played a game in snow. We don't have a lot of it now, maybe light flurries, but he is not used to this weather. 
Now he'll get used to it in a hurry, and believe me, if he's thinking about the weather at this point, he's in the wrong business. Guaranteed it's not going through his mind at all. Vikings have stayed out of the penalty problem, which plagued them earlier in the year. Third down and 13, the swing pass to Charles Evans. And Evans is knocked out of bounds. A nice tackle. By Wayne Simmons and Eugene Robinson. So that will bring up fourth down. And they're getting some pressure up front. And, and if you're going to put it on the young quarterback, you got to be able to get some pressure in his face. Now remember the last time that they played, they got the hold on Ty Williams. Penalty there marker down against Green Bay. Remember the last time these two teams played, they came out of it. And Corey Stringer thought he did a real good job against Reggie White. Thought he handled him. Run back and watch that. Holding before the pass. Number 37 on the defense. Five yards. First down. And there it is. <laughs> There's the call from Red. They went back and played. And I watched that tape, and I didn't see a dominant effort by Corey Stringer. And, and I think they made a mistake by coming out and saying anything because Reggie White has a memory. Reggie White is going to show Corey Stringer today how to dominate. You don't want to be talking it up against a team like Green Bay at any time. First and ten, Brad Johnson's pass caught by Jake Reed, and he will have a first down for the Vikings, a gain of 12, and their first first down of the game. Now you watch this Viking offense in their two changes. They, they change their philosophy, they're running the football, and then also this guy, Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson has really come on. I mean, he's a young guy. He's gained confidence week after week after week. And frankly, he has a big upside. You don't really know how good this guy can get. Signed to a new four-year contract, so he is the Viking quarterback. Leroy Horde is stuck. And a loss of a yard, and they're not letting Leroy Horde who's had five good games get underway. Sean Jones just lowered the boom on him. You know, there's there's another big defense. A change, rather, with this defense is right here, Sean Jones. Sean Jones, in the middle of the season, was not healthy. And now, look at that. That's as good, I mean, that's as good as you can play that position. He just took Stussy, threw him backwards, and then lowered the boom on him. He's playing extremely well right now in that right defensive end. Vikings have managed only three yards rushing. Second and 12, a fake end around, and the handoff to Ford. And the best running play of the game for Minnesota, a gain of seven yards. George Coots brings down Ford. Watch Charles Evans. I want you to watch number 29, the fullback. He's going to come up, and Williams is going to show up in the hall. Watch the block. Just crushes him. Bends him backwards right here. And then they take care of Reggie White, and they blow it right up inside. That physical kind of blocking out of the fullback position. And when you get it like that, you give your running back a chance. Third down and five. Padre Ismail is in the game as a third wide receiver for the Vikings. Again, Brad Johnson looking for a target, and he dumps it off to Amp Lee, and Lee will get enough for the first down. And a good ad lib by Johnson and the Vikings, a gain of eight yards. Robinson and Simmons brought down Amp Lee. The, right there, that's a perfect example and a great illustration of his confidence growing. Then you see him in, he, he knows he doesn't have anything. They went, man, everybody's taken away. Now he's more mobile than people give him credit for. But he's always under control. When he takes off and runs, he's looking to throw. First down, Minnesota on their 45-yard line. Good protection for Brad Johnson but it's tipped at the line of scrimmage on the pass intended for Chris Carter. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Dick and Matt on the opening drive, Mark Brunel goes in for a Jacksonville score, keeping in mind a Jacksonville win, coupled with no tie between Kansas City and Buffalo. Jacksonville's in, you see the Chiefs up by a field goal. Back to Dick and Matt. I agree with Terry Bradshaw, I think that Brunel is an exciting guy. Dave Wilkins tipped that last pass, bringing up second down and 10. Brad Johnson drills it up the middle, and it is incomplete. Jake Reed and covered by Newsom and Eugene Robinson. Jake Reed is out there, and he's playing hurt, but he wants to play. And that's a big step for Jake Reed. He's getting up a little bit slow, but Jake Reed has really elevated his game. He's a big, strong, physical receiver who can run. And he should have made that catch. I want you to listen to this. I mean, it is tough. 
Eugene Robinson sitting right there. For a receiver who's banged up and hurt, who had doubts, running that into the post with the safety sitting inside, that says a lot about the kind of guy you are. Jake Reed, who Dennis Green said should have a breakout year. He told us that in week one, and he's done just that. Third down and ten. Pressure on Johnson, and out of the backfield is Amp Lee. And Amp Lee battling his way to another Viking first down inside the 45, a gain of 12 yards. I'll tell you what, this Minnesota Viking offense has done is they've had no quit. And that's really the whole team. Remember at the middle of the season, you said, you know what, the Vikings are history. They're not playing very well at all. But they regrouped. They made some changes personnel-wise, and they really started to gain confidence as a team. When a team plays with confidence, you never know how good they can be. And an injured Minnesota Viking right now, Gilbert Brown, is shaken up. And we will take a timeout with 2.38 remaining in the first quarter. The Braun Flex Integral with its integrated cutter and pivoting head gives you our closest, smoothest shave anytime, anywhere. Fast missed to injury and that was in week 13 and Darius Holland has gone in to replace Gilbert Brown and the word is he's suffering from cramps must be that heat 10th play of the drive for the Minnesota Vikings and there's a pass Chris Carter is wide open touchdown Vikings he beat Craig Newsom Carter for the touchdown <laughs> Chris Carter and what a Great play he made for the winning touchdown last week against Tampa Bay. You're not going to get this throw unless you have time to throw the football. I want you to watch to the top right up here. Looks like Stussy got away with a big hold at the top. Don't matter. They, they don't call it. That's down the field. And then here's what really is the big difference of the game. You see how Carter plays so physical. Gets that left hand and just kind of throws him by. That's outstanding. Tenth touchdown reception for Chris Carter. And Scott Sisson to tie it up, and he does for the Minnesota Vikings to quiet this Lambeau Field crowd and the reaction by Brad Johnson. All tied up, 7-7. Tied the game 7-7 on a 43-yard touchdown play from Brad Johnson to Chris Carter. That was a longer scoring drive than what the Packers had. And for Chris Carter... Now tied for 12th all-time with career touchdowns with Fred Bolitnikoff and Harold Jackson. That was number 76 for the superb Chris Carter. And Brad Johnson continues to move the offense for the Minnesota Vikings. That was all Chris Carter there. I mean, he had the time to throw, but you have to get open. Newsom stepped up to try to be physical with him outside, playing right into Chris Carter's hand. And heck, he just took him and threw him by. You're going to get up there and be physical, then you better be physical. Mitch Berger will kick off. Desmond Howard, along with Don Beebe, back deep for the Packers. It is a low swiver, and it bounces into the hands of Don Beebe. But Beebe's still on his feet. And he loses the ball, a fumble. And it's fumbled forward to the 46-yard line. Beebe with great second effort, but lost the ball. Looked like it flopped into the hands of Bernardo Harris, and he was down, and then, then there's the pile. And there's a lot of stuff going on under there right now, believe me. And the Vikings recover. You're right, Harris had his first shot at the ball, but he lost it. And the Minnesota Vikings have recovered the fumble by Don Beebe and have the ball in Packer territory. And now watch, the ball's going to flop out right there. Well, that's a nice job, too. That's an excellent job. Chris Johnson got his hand in there. Bernardo Harris had a shot, and then Pete Bursich just gets to the bottom, and then it's every man for himself, and Bursich did what he had to do to get the ball out of Bernardo Harris's hands. You see, it's going down, kind of in between, and Bursich got it, wrestled it out. So the first turnover of the game, and an opportunity for the Vikings there is Bursich on the sideline. Minnesota ball on the Packer 46. Gilbert Brown is back in there and a flea flicker. Scotty Graham 
goes back to Brad Johnson and his pass intended for Andre Reed out of bounds. Jake Reed out of bounds and that'll bring up second down. And uh, see who the peacemaker is right there? Brett Favre right in the middle of that whole thing. Trying to settle him down. Jake Reed trying to get outside. Now watch Newsom is going to break for that ball. And as it comes down now, he's kind of right on that fringe area. Just knocks him right into the sideline. Boy, that's, yeah, that looks like Gil Haskell last year in Dallas. Remember, we went flying back and knocked his head. There is Gil Haskell. Gil Haskell right there. And he's doing great. Second down and 10, Leroy Horde. Gets a couple of yards, and that will bring up third down and about seven yards. Leroy Horde coming up with the injured Robert Smith has really got the Vikings rushing game back in order. Yeah, and it's the way he's done it. I mean, he's brought that physical style, and the Vikings have been able to adapt to that. And so what he does very, very well is he'll start side, go, going sideways, and then he sees it, and he hits it full speed going right ahead. Remember, he was a Pro Bowl starter just a couple of years ago for the Cleveland Browns. Third down and seven. Brad Johnson going up top and intended for Chris Walsh. He threw it up in the air and it was kind of a floating duck. Eugene Robinson was the closest to it and that will bring up fourth down. Mitch Berger will punt for the second time. First kick went 38 yards and Desmond Howard he had a 92-yard return for a score last week. Here is Berger's kick. And Howard is going to let it bounce. And the Vikings may have saved it at the three, and I believe they did. A great play made by Chris Walsh who was just the intended receiver, and he made a superb play to keep the ball in play, and Brett Favre is backed up inside his own five-yard line. Chris Walsh, that's the kind of effort he gives you all the time. It's 100 miles an hour, and there's no stop. Look at this. Great awareness of his body, has his feet inbounds, is able to, watch how he moves it. Gets the ball back inside, moves the body, it can't be done any better than that. And if he had stepped on the line, that would have been a touchback, but he stayed in bounds. That's a great effort. Great acrobatic effort by Walsh as he accepts congratulations from the Vikings on the sideline. So the Packers will begin from the three-yard line, 7-7, seven, seven, with 105 remaining in the first quarter. Pete Bursich has replaced Dixon Edwards out with a knee injury on defense for Minnesota. will pass on first down. Keith Jackson, the tight end, appears to have a first down for the Packers. Some people are calling it a miracle that could bring peace to a planet or unleash hell upon Earth. Judgment Day is here. Don't miss the X-Files tonight at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. It is a first down for the Packers. Now come out with three wide receivers and Dorsey Levins, the lone setback. Looking right, going left, and the pass is caught by Antonio Freeman. Great leaping catch at midfield. Again, all Brent Favre. Unbelievable. 37 yards. And time runs out. That is the end of the first quarter. A brilliant pass play from Favre to Freeman. That is the end of the first quarter. All tied 7-7. I want you to just watch how he moves in the pocket and buys time. He wants to go to the top side, it's not there. Now he comes back, and in order to find anybody, you have to be able to move in the pocket, and he does that. 
And as he's moving, he's looking the whole time down the field. And then here's the other thing. When you get stuck, make a play. Freeman just goes deep and trusts Barnes arm. 47-yard pass play. We start the second quarter. First down in midfield for the Packers. Barnes pass is incomplete intended for Antonio Freeman and he was covered by Robert Griffith. You know, we're talking about all this stuff with Fred Favre and everything, but in order to have Favre have any kind of time, you have to be able to block John Randall. So far in this game, they've been blocking Randall all the time pretty well. The end of this last play, you see Randall right there, he's, he's getting pretty fired up. Aaron Taylor at the end of the play came and gave him an extra push. Eight straight years in the Pro Bowl for John Randall, and the Packers' offensive line will have their hands full. That was the first incompletion thrown by Favre, second down and ten. And handoff is to Edgar Bennett, second effort, gets inside the 40. And a first down for the Packers, a gain of 11. Orlando Thomas with the tackle. You know, Edgar Bennett is a guy who's kind of not been forgotten, but his, his role has been less and less this year because of a couple things. First of all, they had all those injuries. Second thing is they start to play Dorsey Levins more and more. Edgar Bennett now at this end of the season is more healthy and more explosive and can, and can do more with this offense. Edgar Bennett off to a hot start, gets the handoff again and picks up about two or three yards to about the 37-yard line. Opening minute of the second quarter, Dick Stockton along with Matt Millen, the Packers and the Vikings tied at 7-7. Minnesota will be going to the playoffs as a wild card entry and the Green Bay Packers with a win will assure home field advantage and they can even lose today up to 18 points and still have home games here at Lambeau Field. Second down and eight. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Favre's pass intended for Freeman and covered well downfield as Favre hits the side. Again, they're going to come. To, they're going to come with a blitz, but they pick the blitz up. But they have to be able to block John Randall, number 93. You see, and it, this time they're going to take a chance with the blitz, and Timmerman, 63, has to handle him man for man. And any time you go one on one with Randall, you got your hands full. John Randall recently was voted by 13 offensive coordinators the toughest defensive tackle to block in all the in all the NFL. And his fourth Pro Bowl coming up. Packers second in the NFL on third down conversions. They need eight yards. Fake and a swing pass to Antonio Freeman. Oh! Loses the ball and the Vikings have recovered. Antonio Freeman looked back inside and never paid attention to Fuller. And Fuller just, that's a perfect hit. And Jeff Brady may have recovered the fumble. Freeman jarred and the Vikings recovered their Freeman second fumble Freeman. of the game. Watch Antonio Freeman. And Freeman's going to look back inside. He's going to try to run away from Alexander. See that? And Fuller just came full bore. Watch how his head turns. He never sees Fuller. Fuller just lowers the boom on. That's good football all the way around. And the good thing is, I mean, there's the hit. And he just popped right back up after that. Well, this secondary can hit. This is at full speed, watch it. That was just, that's the way it happened in actual speed. And Jeff Brady recovered the fumble for the Vikings. They have the ball on their 40, 39 yard line. Leroy Horde doesn't get much on first down and Reggie White holds Horde to a gain of only one. Well, I mean, you see plays like that. You see the way this game is being played. And that's an outstanding play by Fuller. That's a great hit. But th then it reminds you that this is Lambeau Field, that it's on grass, and that it's nice and cold, and that it's the black and blue division, and all those things that you want out of this game you're getting today. And as you said, the Packers don't like the Vikings, and the Vikings don't like the Packers. Second and nine. 
from the 40-yard line. Brad Johnson goes down, and he is sacked by Sean Jones. It's the best I've seen Sean Jones play since last year. These last couple weeks, he's been playing very, very well. Now, he's been trying to beat Stussy up the field the whole time. Watch how he counters it. Goes up the field, now back inside. You cannot be an effective pass rusher until you take the inside. Sean Jones has gotten that ankle straightened out. He's gotten some movement back, and he's playing very, very well. Loss of five yards. Third down and 14. Camp Lee in motion. Pressure, and the pass to Charles Evans is incomplete. Once again, the Packers with a great defensive sweep and sequence here, and that will bring up fourth down. There's Corey Fuller, part of the hard-hitting secondary of the Vikings, but now Desmond Howard goes back to receive the kick by Mitch Berger. Running for the third time today. We're tied 7-7 early here in the second quarter. And a fine kick by Berger. Their catch called by Howard at the 28. 37-yard kick by Mitch Berger. And will return to Lambeau Field in just a moment. in Green Bay were tied 7-7. Seven and seven. Packers have turned the ball over twice, but the Vikings have been unable to take advantage either time. Now the Packers with a first down on the 28-yard line. Brett Favre with a fake and going deep and incomplete. It was intended for Freeman and well covered downfield by the Vikings. So in the two turnovers thus far, all the Minnesota Vikings could manage is minus one yard and both of those turnovers Matt occurred in Green Bay territory yeah and I'm not so sure that it's the Minnesota Vikings offense as as it is the Green Bay Packer defense it really turns it up notch. I mean it that defensive line Reggie White and Sean Jones in particular really playing well today second down and ten Looking to throw and his pass intended for Freeman in the middle of the field incomplete. It'll be third down and ten. You know, this Minnesota Viking defense, you know, you talk about John Randall and getting after him. They're secondary to me. They're a year older than they were a year ago, and they really, really playing well together as a unit. You saw what they are in terms of tackles, but they're disciplined back there. They tried to get Corey Fuller on the out and up. He didn't bite at all. This team was 5-5 five and five after an embarrassing loss in Seattle. They beat the Oakland Raiders on the road and went from there. Great job by Dennis Green and his staff. Third down and 10. Freeman is in motion. Randall trying to put pressure on Favre. And the pass up the middle and intended for Freeman. Griffith and Freeman is exchanging words. Incomplete. And it'll be fourth down, and the Packers will have to kick. That's good defense, Dick. I'm telling you, that secondary is really playing well. I mean, every time Favre's going back there, he's having to have to throw that thing right into tight coverage, or he has to buy time by scrambling because there's nowhere to go with the ball. Hendrick will be kicking again, and Favre, who was impressive on the first series, has drawn blanks since then. Amp Lee, back to return for Minnesota. Craig Hendrick. Fair catch called for by Lee. Great kick by Hendrick. And Lee grabs it inside the 10, close to the 5. A great kick by Craig Hendrick. 63 yards. And we'll be right back. First of all, either misjudges the ball or it takes off him. But you call the fair catch. Now catch the ball. He let that go over his head. You can't do that. And that mistake costs him about a good 13 yards. And he comes to the sideline, and they're not too pleased with that. So following that gaffe by F. Lee, the Vikings are forced to start from the 7-yard line. 
from his end zone, Brad Johnson hits Leroy Horde, and Wayne Simmons brings him down short of the first down by a yard and a half. Right now for McDonald's game break, let's return to JB at our Fox Television Center. Dick and Matt, Todd Salenberg, that just won a Terry Award as a punter. Well, guess what? He sees this one returned 88 yards by Carl Williams, who had just been complaining about getting caught from behind. Not here. Tampa Bay, 21-7 over Chicago. Dick and Bo. He wants it, really wanted to finish 8-8 eight eight this year. Doesn't look like that may happen. Second down and two for the Vikings at the 15. Here is Scotty Graham. And Graham is close to first down yardage. Testing the middle of the line. The Minnesota Vikings taking a look at their first four possessions. And their first one that resulted in a punt and a very impressive second drive that went 82 yards. But then they had to punt twice after the turnovers by the Packers. Sean Jones is down. They need Sean Jones to play the way he's been playing for this playoff and Super Bowl run, if they're going to get there. He's, he's really turned his game up, and they need that. You know, what's happened, Sean Jones picking his spots because he was hurt. Since he's healthy, he was playing well. They need him in full strength. Turner. Packers right now have the most points offensively and given up the fewest defensively. First and 10 at the 17, Leroy Horde gets a couple of yards, and that will bring up second down and long. Gabe Wilkins has replaced Sean Jones in the lineup for Green Bay. Well, if you're going to run the middle of the defense of the Green Bay Packers, you got to run right here at number 93, Gilbert Brown. They're trying to double team him. He just holds. Did you see how he did that? See, now that looks like nothing, but what that is is you hold the point. And that point is what everything else is predicated off of in that defense. If you don't have a point, if it's moving, you've got nothing to work on. Second and seven. Hand off to Amp Lee. And Amp Lee gets to the 22-yard line. It'll be third down and about four. Eugene Robinson from the secondary. Now, Dick, I want to show you this. You know, this time, Gilbert Brown can't hold the point. I want you to watch. He's going to try to hold it, and they're just going to double him right out of there. See, now, boom, all of a sudden, there he goes. And once that point moves, then you just take that spot. But Gilbert Brown this season has really stepped his game up. And I think he's the best point holder in the National Football League. He's a great pusher inside. He used to say he had a good front porch. He still does. But he's a good player, too. Oh, he's outstanding. For what he does, he's as good as there is. Third down and three for the Vikings. Johnson and Horde up the middle and he appears to be stopped by a good two yards in his attempt for a first down and it was Brian Williams and George Coots, a couple of linebackers who came up to make the play. I'll tell you what this Packer defense has been doing since that big play to Chris Carter. They're taking away their wide receiver and they're making Brad Johnson have to go underneath. So they're confusing Brad Johnson a bit as Mitch Berger goes back to kick for the Vikings. And once again, the dangerous Desmond Howard, who found a home this year as a kick returner for the Packers. Line drive kick. Howard will let it bounce, and it takes a Minnesota roll. Flag is down, and you can see on the Fox board, it says flag. Red Cashin will sort it out. Illegal man downfield is the call against the Vikings. Now you'd want to take that one again because when you have the kick returner in the National Football League who's just set a record for yards, you want to get the ball in his hands. And then I'll tell you what happens when you have a returner like that. And I was I was fortunate enough to play with Greg Pruitt when he had a tremendous year like that. Ineligible man downfield, number 56 of the kickers, five yards, still fourth down. And that was Pete Burst that you got down there, but. When you have a guy back there, all of a sudden you gain great confidence. And this is a part of football that people forget about. It's a transition game, and it's a field position game. Desmond Howard has gained almost 1,000 yards of field position. Look, at 791 yards. That the offense doesn't have to gain. That makes a huge difference. That's called a hidden yardage in pro football terms. And if you play with a short field, that gives your offense a great boost. So Berger will have to kick from the five-yard line. He gets off an end-over-end kick, but Desmond Howard 
has the ball and he returns it into Viking territory at the 49. Hey, talk about field position. He just gained himself about 18 yards of field position with that penalty. Snow's glistening. A beautiful sight, Hawk. Packers have their best starting field position of the game. And following the penalty and the second kick by the Green Bay Packers are in Viking territory at their 49. 7-7 the score. Three wide receivers come out for Green Bay. Dorsey Levins is the running back. Levins has running room off to the right, and he has a first down close to the 35-yard line where Fuller and Thomas bring him down a pickup of 12 yards. Once again, today's Athlete trivia question is which was the last team to lead the NFL in most points scored and fewest points allowed? The answer, the undefeated Miami Dolphins of 72. They led the NFL in scoring and allowed a league low of 171 points. Also were Super Bowl champs from that year, 1972, which I guess, and when you say they're unbeaten, I guess that kind of said it. Yeah, don't take long for things to get past me. Caught on very quickly Thank here. Thank you very much. First down, Green Bay on the 37 of the Vikings. Handoff is to Edgar Bennett. And he breaks a couple of tackles. And finally, Brady brings him down. But not before Bennett has a 14-yard gain inside the 25. See Griffith? Griffith tried to get the ball out of there. And Edgar Bennett just ran him over. I want you to watch as he comes through. This is hard running. Edgar Bennett has, look, watch it, boom, right there. He tried to take the ball, and then Edgar Bennett just ran right through that tackle. This is a heads-up play, and you do this when you know there's another tackler with you. Now, he assumed that the guy inside had him, but he didn't, and Bennett ran right through. And the Packers moving the ball on the ground. Bennett already with 50 yards rushing. First down on the 23 of the Vikings. Brett Favre with a play fake. Henderson underneath. And he is wrestled down by Robert Griffith after a minimal gain. See Andre Risen, and, and you're going to look at the number of catches he has, and you're going to see it's zero. But see, Andre Risen, with his abilities, takes people out of the mix. See, Corey Fuller, you're going to have to cover him. You know what kind of speed he has. You know he can get to the inside of the field. He eats up your safety. So rising, you start to defend abilities instead of the man, and that makes a big difference. He is a presence out there, even though he has not caught a pass and hasn't done that much. I've also noticed that rising has been blocking his little rear end off for this offense. Second and seven from the 20, and the give is to Levins. Dorsey Levins wending his way. It'll be third down and short. He picks up three on that play with Pete Bursich playing in place of the injured Dixon Edwards at linebacker Bursich. making the stop. Say, I like that Pete Bursich. I mean, Pete Bursich, you know, Dixon Edwards gets hurt, now he's going to step in. Now, he plays with an attitude. He's a tough guy, a special teams guy. He takes nothing from anybody. And the Green Bay Packers will use their first timeout of this first half. 5-15 remain in the half. In the lane, 7-7. Snow's glistening. A beautiful sight, oh, we're happy. That was a great place to play in as a visitor and as a home team. I mean, it's just, it had everything you wanted, much like Lambeau. Third down and four on the Vikings 17 for Green Bay. Freeman in motion. And the pass dropped by Antonio Freeman. He did get a hand on the ball. And that'll bring up fourth down. And the field goal team comes out for the Packers. See John Randall, you see his right shoulder pad is pushed up in the air, and he's going, hey, look, how can you get away with that? He's looking at Timmerman. He's talking to him. He said, you keep your hands down. Just block me fair, which initially you can forget about. <laughs> Chris Jackie will attempt a 35-yard field goal. Hendrick is the holder, and the kick is good. Jackie's field goal gives the Packers a 10-7 lead with 5.07 remaining in the first half. Yep, they're not crazy about each other. He <laughs> gave the Packers good field position to set up that drive at the points. Yeah, that was an 18-yard difference. That's, that's a big difference. That's a difference in that play right there. Light snow falling here at Lambeau Field. 
as Craig Hendrick prepares to kick off. Harold Morrow and Amp Lee are back deep. And Harold Morrow returning for the Vikings. And he is stopped at the 27-yard line by Bernardo Harris. Well, on Christmas night, Dustin Hoffman and Gina Davis star in a comedy adventure about the world's most unlikely hero. Fox presents a special movie presentation of Hero, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Hey, that's my guy Pete Shalvert. Hey, he got a Christmas tree up there. Look at him. He's got his own tent. That's embarrassing. First down, Leroy Horde with a good gain on first down, gets about six. Remember last time we were here, heck, and they said, yo, Pete Chalvaris, he's way, look at him, way up there. Now, they had, they said they had to harness him, and now they went further. Now they built him his own domicile up there, like a specially built tent. You can't even see him Yeah, but he there. can't wave to us. Where is he? There he is, look at that, look at that ugly push right in the middle there. Chevy up the door. Second down and four. Leroy Horde off tackle has a first down. George Koontz makes the stop and a gain of five yards. So you're getting an example of the hard inside running of Leroy Horde and how he has really boosted the Viking running game. Yeah, he gives you power. And then he's running behind Randall McDaniel, who also has power. I'll tell you what happens with the back like that. You start getting a little bit of confidence, and he comes up there, and he hits you so hard from behind. All of a sudden, he makes your offensive line that much more powerful. It's like another boost behind you. By the way, Sean Jones is back in the Green Bay lineup up front. First and ten, Brad Johnson pass is intercepted by Craig Newsom. Craig Newsom, second-year quarterback, picks one off for the Packers. Bad throw by Brad Johnson. Newsom was behind. He was waiting for the ball to come back inside, and the ball never got there. First thing you're going to see, he's got a lot of time to throw this football. Nice job up front by the offensive line. Then the ball just takes off. So he was expecting Jake Reed to keep on coming, and Reed did. Newsom sitting behind, just sitting back in his zone, just waiting. See, he's waiting for a break. The break didn't come. And the second interception of the season by Craig Newsom, and a 20-yard return. So the Packers more than doubling their takeaways from a year ago. First down on the Viking 35. Green Bay leading 10 to 7. A handoff to Edgar Bennett. And Bennett is stopped by Robert Griffith. And that secondary continues to penetrate and make fine plays for the Vikings. Okay, Robert Griffith, he really plays well. He's got really good instinct for the football. And then the other thing is this Viking defense does a great job of running to the ball. And so if they can get you running sideways, they're going to beat you. And you can attack them straight ahead and go a little bit more power inside, then your chances are a little bit better. But in order to do that, you've got to block Randall inside. Coach Fazio, the defensive coordinator for Minnesota, brings up second and ten. And Brett Favre is sacked. And Derek Alexander gets the sack for the Vikings, a loss of five and the first sack of the game by Minnesota. A couple things happen. First, you have to be able to block John Randall. So he's going to go with the spin move back outside. So they have a back there. See, they double him, Edgar Bennett. Now, if you're taking two guys to handle one guy, then it's going to open somebody up on the other side. And see what happens. Alexander is able to come inside on Wilkerson and make the play. So that's two facets. The third facet is if you notice, Favre had nowhere to throw that football down the field, which means the secondary again is doing their job. Third and 15. Favre trying to get away, and there goes Alexander again, and a coverage sack by the Minnesota Vikings. Great play, and that secondary, the star of the defense. That secondary is playing outstanding. See Griffiths running. Washington on the outside. Now he looks. By that time, there's no place to get the ball. The pressure's already coming in. All they do is just take Pete Persich, run him outside in that zone. Now watch up top. They take care of the double team right here with Randall. And then you just keep on coming. Martin Harrison's able to get there. And then finally Alexander. All because the coverage down the field takes away your options. 
So a 2-0, seven and running remaining in the first half. Craig Hendrick will be kicking and Lee to receive. And a Lee calls for the fair catch at the 13-yard line with just under two minutes to go in the half. And we will have our two-minute warning here at Lambeau Field with the Packers leading the Vikings 10 to seven. Good morning with 1.58 on the clock. First down for the Vikings on their 13. Andre Ismail in the game and a fake end around. Handoff to Leroy Horde, who doesn't get much. Tackled by Brown. Right in the middle of, of Gilbert Brown again. You know, you look at this Green Bay Packer defense and you say where they got better. And they, 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 Santana Dotson and Eugene Robinson. But Gilbert Brown, really, I think he was almost unexpected. Nobody expected him to be able to play as well as he has all season long. I mean, he's gotten better as the year has gone on. Superb run defender has been Brown. Brings up second and eight. Brad Johnson looking one way and Horde out of the backfield breaks a tackle. Leroy Horde runs out of bounds, picks up good yardage close to the 35. 19 yards total for Minnesota. He is good. Leroy Horde is a good football player. Makes you wonder how the heck he ever got released in the middle of the season. See, here's the part of Horde that people forget about. He's an outstanding pass catcher. And he's got nice, soft hands, and he still has, look at this, he's running away from people down there. Coots catches him just by the fingertips, but Horde is, he's very, very good. Played with Baltimore and Carolina, both, before he was dropped and picked up by the Vikings. First and 10 at the 34, Amp Lee. And coming on is Gilbert Brown to make the play and a gain of only one. See, Brown made the tackle. The guy who made the play there was Sean Jones. Sean Jones played it perfectly. I mean, this is, it doesn't get any better than what he just did. Hurry up offense, under a minute to play. Vikings have all three timeouts remaining. Pass to Jake Reed. And Reed gets it to the 42, short of the first down. Gain of seven yards as the clock continues to run. And now the Minnesota Vikings will use their first timeout with 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Oh, it's getting colder here. Third down and two following a Minnesota timeout. Brad Johnson looking to throw, and he's going deep, and the pass to Chris Carter. And it is caught inside the 30-yard line. Jake Reed, that is, with a 30-yard gain. It was Reed, not Carter, with the catch. And now the Vikings are getting close to field goal range. And watch up front. It's a nice job. Reggie White just going with the power move, but Johnson stays in the pocket, knows where he wants to go with the ball. And look how this ball comes down, right to the outside where it has to be thrown. Great throw by Brad Johnson. And a first down on the 27 with 34 seconds to go in the first half. Johnson throws it away. Closest to it was Walsh. That'll stop the clock with 28 seconds on the clock. Now I mentioned earlier about Brad Johnson and how he's gotten better and you can see the confidence in him. And I, I think, and I mentioned about a big upside I think he's just growing. I don't think, you know, somebody asked me this morning, how good is he? I said, I, you can't really answer that. Time is going to tell with Brad Johnson. Played it with the London Monarchs of the World League, and he said that was the best thing that ever happened to him. Second down and 10 on the 27. Four wide receivers for Minnesota. Johnson's pass to Evans out of the backfield. And Charles Evans pushed out of bounds by Wayne Simmons and a first down to about the 12-yard line. And the Vikings definitely now in field goal range. Now, the other thing with Brad Johnson is he's 6'5", and he gets to see the whole field. Watch Charles Johnson right here, number 29. He's going to be coming out, and then Johnson looks down the field first. It's not there, and then you just dump it off. 22 seconds remaining in the first half. First down on the Green Bay 12. Yeah. 
And a whistle. Flag. There it says flag under our score. Red Cashin. Before the snap. False start. Number 73 on the offense. Five yards. Touch to see. Left tackle. Five yards marked off. Watch Todd Stussy lined up over Sean Jones right there. See that little movement? Once you're set in your position, you can't move. You can't move till that ball is snapped. Vikings have committed only one offensive penalty up until today since the Oakland Raider game. First and 15. Following the penalty, Brad Johnson with pressure and the pass into the end zone intended for Chris Carter and he's covered by Tyrone Williams. Tell you, this offensive line is doing a good job of giving Brad Johnson just enough time, and Johnson's doing enough, he's doing a very good job of staying in there and being patient. And I think for a young guy to be able to be patient in the pocket, even know when you're gonna get the guy in your face to make that throw, that says a lot about where you're at. Brad Johnson has avoided the critical mistake since he's taken over at quarterback for the Vikings. He's thrown one interception so far today, but neither team has been able to capitalize. Second and 15, play fake. Johnson drills it, going to Carter, incomplete, and he was covered by Craig Newsom. Newsom, covering to Carter. Watch Newsom, 21. What he does well is he's physical. Remember the last time he tried to do this, Carter beat him at that game. Had Carter been able to hold on to that ball, you'd have to call it a completion because Newsom hit him while he was in bounds and had a chance to come in bounds, but he wasn't quite able to hold. It's amazing is that Newsom has not committed a pass interference or a legal contact penalty all year. This is the 10th play of the drive, third down and 15. Johnson getting away and down by Santana Dotson. Sean Jones made the play again. He is just playing great today. Sean Jones has found his speed to the corner, which I haven't seen him have all season long. Watch him right down here. This time he's going to tell him to take the beltway, get the arm under, and he just uses that long arm to be able to get to the corner. And that's the difference in the play. Now, if he has a chance to look down the field, what he's going, what he's going to see is there's no place to throw the football. And then on the other side, you have Newsom, and he's working on Walsh, and again, right there, right on top of everything. So the three wideouts had nowhere to go, and then Sean Jones forces them to have to step up. This Green Bay Packer defense at the start of the game was five, five yards out of first place for total defense. They've been playing very well, but I think more importantly, they're playing their best defense now going into the playoffs. That's the best time to play it. That's what the Cowboys are doing right now, and the 49ers as well. So following the timeout, a 34-yard field goal attempt by Scott Sisson to try to tie the game. High snap, and Sisson's kick is good. So the Minnesota Vikings on Scott Sisson's field goal have tied it up on the final play of the first half, and that is the end of the first half with the story. And it's been pretty much of a tight, close game. Vikings have the total yardage edge and a little bit in time of possession as well, but we're all tied 10-10, each team with a touchdown and a field goal, and Brad Johnson, who is 4-1 during this streak as a starter, 5-2 overall this year for the Vikings. And Reggie White wants to continue the great Advantage on the home field. The Packers have won 15 straight here at Lambeau Field. You know, Dick, um, the, the Packers said they wanted to come out and have a fast start. They took that first series, they went right down and scored. And since that time, they haven't really done very much at all. And I think that has to credit the Minnesota Viking defense. Mitch Berger will kick off, and the Packers will get the ball first as we start the second half. 
Don Beebe and Desmond Howard will return for the Packers, and the wind blows the ball off of the tee. We've had a light dusting of snow since the start of the game. There is Beebe on the left and Howard on the right for the Packers, who have won five in a row. 12 and 3 overall. And Berger's kick. Headed toward Desmond Howard. Howard with a little juke. And a nifty return by Desmond Howard. Close to the 45 yard line of 40 yards for Howard. Dick, that was more than nifty. That was a great move in the middle of that run. Did you see that spin move he did right in the middle? And all that can only be set up when you're getting blocked up front. See, they have Mario pinned right there with Thompson. Now watch this move. Spin right in the middle, have your balance, and then make the play up the field. Desmond Howard found his niche in the National Football League, and it's the turning ball for the Green Bay Packers. On first down, Brett Barr going to Antonio Freeman. And Freeman wide open, first down to the 35-yard line. Orlando Thomas on the tackle after a 22 pickup. Did you ever see those speed machines that they have for pitchers? If they had put one on Brett Favre that time, it would have been over 100 miles an hour. You can see he's been sacked twice, seven the first time. But he really has been kind of, that secondary has taken away his wide receivers. So they've come out and they find Antonio Freeman on the first play. And Favre, boy, that thing was, that was coming. Both wide receivers line up to the left, and Edgar Bennett with a quick burst, close to a first down, and has one for the Packers. A gain of 11 yards, tackled by Al Conway, the umpire, <laughs> number 27. Is he? And the reason he can make that tackle is because William Henderson, just watch William Henderson, number 30, right there. And he is just going to crush the backer right there. Boom! And that opens that thing wide up. Now watch the tackle by Conway. Ah, your hips are too high. He's got to be able to get a little bit lower to get a better pop. Conway lost his helmet in the process. First down at the 24. Here is Mark Shimura. A big favorite here, the tight end who missed three games with a sprained arch. Picks up seven yards on that first down play. You know, it's funny. You heard Howie Long and Terry Bradshaw and Ronnie Lott and James Brown talking about this Minnesota Viking defense and all the stuff they were talking about prior to the game and, and Brady, the linebacker, and how they were going to attack him. And I can tell you something, it's been a quiet day for Jeff Brady inside. They've gone after him. William Henderson has out physical them. He really hasn't made very many plays at all today. Hardly any. Derek Alexander replaces Fernando Smith. Here's Edgar Bennett. And it looks like uh, that wasn't the smoothest of all handoffs in a game of Two yards and Alexander making the play. Hey, Ed, Edgar Bennett came to play today. And he came in the other day and sat down, started to talk to us, just kind of, you know, just flopping around in there. And I asked him about, you know, Dorsey Levins has been playing well. He said, man, I just want to play. He said, I would rather play hurt and hard for four years than play healthy for 10 years. He said, I just want to get out there and play. Give me the football. Third down and one. And the pitch to Dorsey Levins, and he gets around Jeff Brady, and the Packers have a first down. First down for Green Bay on Levins' run outside. You know, they said they weren't going to allow Jeff Brady to make a play no matter how. And so he gets outside, and then Shimura just kind of puts the clamps on him. Did you see that? Shimura just got that left hand on him and held him, and that allowed him to get to the court. He says, you know, about my feelings about Green Bay, you know, he's going to headhunt. And then somewhere in that quote, I don't know how it came out, but they interpreted it as he was going to hurt Brett Favre, and he was going to take him out of the game. And that did not sit well with the Green Bay Packers coaching staff. Well, Mike Holmgren made it a point to stop Brady today. First and 10 at the 13. Here's Levins on the screen pass. Blocking in front, touchdown, Packers. Great block by Frank Winters. Did you see that? He got out there, one eye and all, shield on his face, made the block that put Levins in the end zone. A textbook play by the Packers with Winters blocking for Levins, a 13-yard play, and the Packers have regained the lead. 
You're going to go with the screen. You're going to watch Frank Winters is going to come from the inside out. He's going to show up the left side of your screen. Right there. Now watch. You've got one guy to block. Right through him. Orlando Thomas got blocked and Levin just walked in. Chris Jackie with Hendrick holding. And the kick is good. So it takes the Packers only three minutes of this third quarter to take the lead. 17 to 10. Far to Dorsey Levin. Season gives the Packers a 17 to 10 lead and the Packers score on their first possession of the second half going 57 yards on six plays. Greg Hendrick will kick off. Amp Lee and Harold Morrow are back deep for Minnesota. Morrow on the two-yard line returning. And the rookie from Auburn, still not down, but the forward progress has stopped at the 27. Watch well, Dorsey Levin, you can see his Lambeau League technique. He says, you know, what happens if you score, the guys will critique you. He says, you have to have a couple things right. See how he gathered himself first? He said, the main key is you can't get too far or you go in. He said, they'll dump beer on you. He said, you can't get too low because you have no staying power. But guess what? He's on his way down. He had no staying power. Nine -nine. Oh, they gave him a 9-9. Nine that -nine. East German judge. <laughs> they won the 10. That's what everyone Every says. Every time they get you. They always say that. Brad Johnson flips it out to Leroy Horde on a screen pass. And Horde, going down the sidelines, gets extra yardage close to midfield. And down is Gilbert Brown on the field after a gain of 18 yards. That's the second time Brown shaken up. He had cramps the first time he went down. Gilbert almost made that play out there in the side. That's a nice job by Leroy Horton. You're going to watch him right here. He's going to get after him. Now, flatten out down the line. Williams tries to hold the outside. He just can't quite get there. He got cut from behind. And we'll have a timeout. We'll return to Lambeau in a moment. Uh, walked off the field. He'll be replaced by Darius Holland, number 90, up front for the Packers. Christmas spirit is alive and well here in Lambeau Field. Our chance to wish you all season's greetings wherever you are watching our Fox game. And uh, as all my friends, they forgot to bring their minds with them. <laughs> and they're just sitting out there in the middle of... Well, the capes are keeping it warm, don't you think? Oh, I would think so. They need some of that extra body fat. I brought enough with me for the rest of the board. Most of them, though, they came prepared. Leroy Horde on first down at the 46, held to no gain. Darius Holland came right in and made a play. Darius Holland out of Colorado has been good for this Packer defense, giving guys a flow and coming and playing at a good level. And I think when you're in that position to come in and come off the bench and learn, you have to come in ready to play. Holland's been able to do that pretty effectively. Second down and 10, Leroy Horn has over 70 yards total in receiving and rushing thus far. Gives way to Amp Lee, play action. And the pass was intended for Lee out of the backfield and nearly intercepted by Brian Williams, the linebacker. Hey, Santana Dotson was right in on Brad Johnson right away. I mean, Santana Dotson is not a big guy. You're gonna watch him right here, number 71. And he's working on David Dixon, who is a big guy. I mean, they're talking like 330-some pounds or 350, and you're going against you know, Santana Dotson, and that's kind at 285. But his game is all moving. He does it very well. Third down and 10 on the Viking 46. Short drop by Johnson. And goes up top, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Chris Wall and Reggie White. Put a hit on Re Johnson there. Well, he had a chance, but the reason that they couldn't throw the football right away was because of the coverage. You see Doug Evans on one side, and then you go to the other side, and it's Williams, and then there's no place to throw the football down the field. Now you can look. He looks right away. Jake Reed wasn't there. He looks to the other side. He wasn't there. 
and then Reggie White, who worked off a cut block, came up and just pushed him down. So on fourth down, the Vikings will have to kick. Desmond Howard back deep, and Mitch Berger will kick. Backing up is Howard, and he muffs the ball. Desmond Howard in trouble. And Howard gets out of trouble and does a great job of... He woke up on the right side of the bed today, Dick. Yes, he did. <laughs> he was trapped at the goal line and brings it out on a 25-yard return. We'll be back. Hey, talk about taking your eye off the ball to run first before you catch it. Look at that. Ball's down here. His eyes are up here. And look where it is. You have to concentrate that thing all the way through. And it's just so basic and simple. But he forgot it that one time, and that was the difference. Packers from the 24-yard line. And Brett Favre going deep. And he was going deep for Don Beebe, incomplete. That'll bring up second down. And this playoff update is being brought to you by Mitsubishi. There you see the story. Packers have the first round by, and Carolina Panthers need a win to also get that first round by. The 49ers need some help. The Cowboys will host a wild card game, and the Eagles and the Vikings here today We'll play on the road next week in the wild card game. Yeah, Dick, and Pittsburgh is winning right now 14-12 down in Carolina. Second and 10 at the 24-yard line. Brett Favre's pass is caught by Andre Risen. And Risen will give the Packers a first down at the 37. Hey, I'm going to show you what the difference is now with Ruth Wilkerson playing that left side. See, now you can use your running back here to control this backer. He has to come outside. See, they don't have to double him. See, now you move him, and that opens this whole area up. That is a major difference when you can have control. It's called flood control with your back. It opens up that underneath, and your wide receiving game comes wide open. And that is Ryzen's first catch of the game. First down, Packers on the 37. Barr will go to the air again. And this one deep, Antonio Freeman, and it's broken up by Orlando Thomas. It's and he has play. some help. That's a nice play by Thomas. But Favre puts that ball in there where very few people are going to put that ball. I mean, that's the difference with a guy playing with confidence and has an arm, and you take yourself a chance. And here it is. First thing you're going to notice, look, no defenders anywhere. A lot of time to throw the ball. Now, the ball is thrown in an area that few people can get the ball into, and that's a great job of Thomas coming over and knocking that thing up. There's Bruce Wilkerson who's been playing himself a good football game. Oh, look at that! Tried to put, put a hook of Munch's push. We have a lot of side events going on in this game. Fred Barr swings it out to Mark Shimura. Shimura has a first down, and it's Thomas who bumped him out of bounds. Darryl Talley was trailing behind, and the Packers get 16 yards into Minnesota territory. Hey, I'll tell you, the second half of this game, the Packers just came out to play. And watch Chamor. He is a big difference why this offense is moving. Look at the straight arm. And then he just carries. He kind of has a little bit of a little bit of a Frankenstein in him. And he's working. Look at this. this is Daryl Talley before the football game checking out the field. He's got his spikes on. Well, well dressed <laughs> Look at like this. <laughs> he's got his coyote on out there. He told me before the game, most guys don't know how to wear a coat like this, but I do. No one will argue with Darrell Talley. And off this to Dorsey Levens up the middle, and Levens picks up about three or four yards. It's funny, I was talking to Darrell Talley. He's mad because Shamor made that catch on him. But he said, look, I know, but all those years in Buffalo, I know how to play in the cold. He said, I showed up today. He said, I got stuff guys don't even know about you. He said, I'll get being there getting dressed, and they'll look at me and say, how you staying warm? He said, look. I'll be sweating, I'll be so warm. That'll happen after playing up at Orchard Park all those years, but you're right. He looked better in for her, right? Second down and six. Packers lead 17 to 10. And here's Edgar Bennett having a good game. Bennett first down. Hard runner today is Edgar Bennett. And he's got a first down at the 36-yard line after a pickup of eight. They're running inside. They're running outside. Edgar Bennett has been effective 
anywhere he's run the football today. Inside the tackles, right at John Randall. And they try to run away from him. And when you start doing that, you have to look at that offensive line because those are the guys who are getting the job done. The line of scrimmage is moving backwards if you're a defender for the Minnesota Vikings. Green Bay with 106 yards, rushing 71 of them for Edgar Bennett. It'll be a first down for the Packers on the Viking 36. Barb with a short drop, drills it, and it's caught by Ryzen. And that'll be another first down for the Packers. And right now, from McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Ben Jacksonville trying to earn a wild card spot, sees its lead cut to the six as Bobby Bear finds Eric Metcalf. That in the third. Of course, he needs a Jacksonville win and not a tie in this game. Chiefs are up by three right now. Back to Dick and Matt. They have tie, though, is possible the way that score is going. 9-6 which means they're not playing exceptional football <laughs> unless those defenses have turned it on. So Andre Risen's catch giving the Packers another first down. They're marching impressively. They're on the Viking 25. Bennett in motion and William Henderson on the game and gets about three yards. The Packers who have dominated the Vikings as you mentioned here in this third quarter and have a total yard edge of 111 to 18 here in the third. Look at this Green Bay Packer offense and what they've gotten done with it and, and how they've been able to research. You have to look at Mike Holmgren, but more than that, you have to look at Ron Wolf, the general manager, and how he's put this thing together. He's done a masterful job. This is the ninth play of the drive. Second and seven. Barb with time and his pass to Risen touchdown. Andre Risen makes his leap into the crowd. They're not gonna let him go. Hey, look, he doesn't know the rules yet. They're gonna pull him back out of the stand. <laughs> Did you see how far up into the stands he went? And that is Ryzen's first touchdown catch in a Green Bay uniform. Well, he's a pretty good athlete overall. Well, Andre Ryzen, he's off, he's off the charts. <laughs> so that, that guy can do anything. That's his first Packer touchdown. Look how happy the guys are for him. Well, he's got to feel great coming to this team and having a chance for, who knows, the Super Bowl perhaps. Chris Jackie with the extra point, and the Packers now lead 24 to 10. But well, he knows where he wants to go. Watch the takeoff. He's up, and he went way too far. He's got a, some vertical in his game, Dick. You think Andre Risen on the left, Barb on the right? Happy he's in Green Bay. 22 yard touchdown catch. Three receptions in that drive. An impressive one for the Packers, who are up by two touchdowns now. As Hendrick kicks off into the end zone, and it's down by Morrow for a touchback. Dick, now Andre Risen wouldn't be able to get this catch or far make this throw if you don't have the protection. They come with a blitz, picked up perfectly. Edgar Bennett picks up the blitzer, gives them time. A little bit of extra hit at the end there from John Randall. But he's able to find him down below. And he can find them because he's matched up man-to-man. -man. And all he did was turn the corner completely around. And the other thing is, you know, you got to work on your leap technique. When you get to this point, he's going in way too much height, 9.65, not as good as Levin. He almost jumped into the stands, including his feet. Leroy Horde on first down. Hey, watch the sleep. You see, he, his takeoff is way too good. He tries, remember, Dorsey Levin has tried to gather himself. Now, he's just gone. He tried right there. Oh, there's the stutter step. And now, see, here's the product of too much spring in his leg. See this? Way too high. Hips are up, over the top. And look, they just engulfed him right there. They're, they're eating him in his stance. They're not going to let him out. Henderson has to get him and pull him back into the field. He saved him for the next series. Second down and six. Brad Johnson, nowhere to go. And down he goes. Reggie White gets the sack. No place to throw the football. He was looking for Chris Carter all the way down the field. 
and Newsom, who's played himself since that touchdown to Carter, played himself an outstanding game. You're going to get up there, be physical. Get your hands on him. Use the sideline as your help. Run him into the sideline. Now he just tries to work him. There's no place to throw the ball. And Carter and Newsom going out. Look, rule number one, never pick a fight on the opposing team's sideline. We have had so many skirmishes away from the ball today between these teams. Third down and nine on the 21. Johnson throws it away. Carter was blanketed by Newsom. And that will bring up fourth down. Dick, the pressure right there. Brad Johnson felt that pressure. You know, in the beginning of the game, you saw uh, Reggie White is there. You saw that he was able to stand in there and have some patience. Now this time, he's getting rid of that ball without the patience. But watch the catch by Lamont Hollingquist. Now that's being ready at all times. If you're ready in special teams, the ball's got to be there. Lamont Hollingquist comes up with a nice catch. Boy, he made it look easy. Two straight catch. Mitch Berger will kick from inside the 10. Desmond Howard is back deep for the Packers. Howard at the 32. And slips and falls and is down. And the Packers, who have had two impressive scoring drives, will get the ball back. 4.38 to go in the third. What's advantage in the NFC playoffs? And the 13th win that they can hold on. Packers with a first down on their 39-yard line. First down on the board. Double tight end with Edgar Bennett, the running back. Far to throw. And will take off. And slides close to midfield on first down. So they're not going to let John Randall make a play. We've, we've not talked about Randall all day. And this time they're going to double team him with Shamura. They've done it a whole different variety of ways. They've doubled him with two linemen, the center. They've blocked the tackle down on him with the guard. They've taken the fullback and used him. They've taken Edgar Bennett and used him. That time they took Shamora, the other tight end, and they motioned him, and then he doubled him. Second down and two. And the give is to Bennett, and he's got a first down into Minnesota territory. Game of three. You know, Dick, we're talking about all these... <laughs> All these leaps, and you see how they're getting into the stance. This is kind of sort of in sync. And you see that Dorsey Levins, so he gets his stutter right here. There's the stutter. Now there's the stutter down here. Now you see his hips are too low. His hips are way too high. See, now he gets caught and slides down, and he gets eaten alive over on the right side. Ball on the 50, first down. And Andre Risen needed help to get out of that. <laughs> Henderson had to pull him out. First down at the midfield mark, Dorsey Levins. Hard charging, gets close to another Green Bay first down. Martin Harrison making the tackle and a pickup of nine. But the other thing to that is is that Andre Risen, he'd never been, he'd never done one, so he he thought he was still someplace else. He was going to give that that little chicken dance, and did you see it there? Antonio Freeman said, "Uh, uh hey, this is Lampo. Where's your leap?" <laughs> and then he, and then it showed up. Which is tougher, catching a touchdown pass or jumping into the Lambo crowd? Yeah, I think the toughest thing was getting out of the stands after he went in. Second down and one on the Viking 41-yard line. Here is Edgar Bennett. Oh, nice and he is hit quickly by Pete Versich and down. Let's see if he has enough for the first down with forward progress. I'll tell you, you know, we're seeing all these things about leaps and jumps and having fun with it, but... But there's still some nasty hits going on down here. That's the first thing. The second thing is the Green Bay Packers are doing something that most people didn't think they can do, and that's run the football. And if you're going to win in this kind of weather, you have to be able to run the football when you need to. And they're doing it right now. How about their drives here in the third quarter, Matt? 57 yards for a touchdown, then 76 yards for a TD. And a first down right here. Edgar Bennett has had himself... A excellent game. Dorsey Levins come in, and he's he's been able to run the football effectively. And all that talks about is the offensive line up front, and then William Henderson, that fullback. There you see, in week four, only 217 total yards in that loss in Minneapolis. Over 400 yards today.
Packers. First down. And the handoff is to Edgar Bennett. Boy, he's running hard. Edgar Bennett has something to prove the way he's running today and a gain of 22 yards. And again, they're running right at the middle, right up inside. And it all starts, watch Timmerman's block right there. Nice job right there by Aaron Taylor. And then Edgar Bennett is just, he just blows right up inside. Watch, there's the block. Jeff Brady again. They're eating him up inside. They've gone after Jeff Brady all game long. And the Packers are sending a message to the rest of the league that they can run the ball. 152 yards and Bennett again. And Edgar Bennett gets inside the 20-yard line where he's tackled by Jeff Brady, a gain of one yard. So the other part to that we're talking about is Mark Chamora. When Chamora came back, all of a sudden their running game started to get better. It's no surprise. Big, strong guy. And they need Chamora and they need Jackson. They need them both because they're both two different styles and Holmgren uses them so well. But Chamora with that big body, see, you can put him and block a defensive end. You can also put him on a linebacker. He's fast enough to stay with him. He's made a difference in the team. And they missed him when he was out when they lost games to Kansas City and Dallas. Second and nine. Brett Farr getting rushed, and he flips it to Levin. And a fine nice play is made by Harlan Barnett, <laughs> preventing Levin from getting loose. That's a real good tackle by Barnett. They had that thing set up. Had he been able to get past that, there was a lot of green there. Now watch Favre, you know, he's going to get that little bit of a shovel pass. He's under, he gets a little pressure from Randall, then he just flips it out of it. You watch this, if he doesn't make this play, look at this, look at this room up here. It's a nice play by Barnett. That was a loss of five yards, and that will be the last play of the third quarter. I don't That is the end of the third quarter with the score, the Packers 24, the Vikings 10. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. It's Ron Wolf, and he's a general manager. I'll tell you, Ron Wolf has done an outstanding job here. It's funny how some guys, some guys are coaches on the sideline, they're script guys, and then other guys, they coach by field. Well, Ron Wolf is one of those guys who's a general manager and he's great with personnel and he does it by feel. He's not a computer guy, he watches them and then he gets a sense for them and that's made a huge difference here in Green Bay. Those guys are always the best, the field guys. Third down and 14. Brett Favre going for the end zone. Keith Jackson, touchdown. Keith Jackson's lost some of his game. He used to be able to dunk. Now he had to do the finger roll. Not bad, though. Barb knows he has him. You see how they use Jamora to hold out underneath? And because you can't have your corner dropping off, Jackson can get to that top corner, and Barb delivered a perfect ball. He'll take the finger roll every time. As Jackie has the extra point, and the Packers lead now by a score of 31 to 10. Keith Jackson with a touchdown pass. And the Packers are rolling to home field. Walking in a winter on the land. Gone away. Up, he may be coming in soon. The Packers now lead 31 to 10. And the kickoff. Andre Ismail returning for the first time today. And Ismail brings it out to the 30-yard line. You know, five years ago, this would have probably been a slam dunk for Keith Jackson. But you know, he's lost a little bit of his vertical, and he's down to the finger roll. That's definitely a basketball move. But you know, Jordan, if you're sitting there, you, you got to grade him. And that Jordan would probably give him like a B, because he used to be able to get over the bar and dunk it, and now he's doing the roll. Well, all he wants to do is survive in the league, and he's done that. He's going to the finger roll. He's also going to the Pro Bowl. <laughs> By the way, Keith Jackson, 10th touchdown catch, now leads the Packers in that department. First and 10 at the 31, Brad Johnson has to bring his team from way back, and he completes the 
middle screen to Charles Evans. And let's take a look at how impressive the Packers have been scoring on all three of their possessions, all on touchdown passes here in this second half. I mean, they just flipped the switch at halftime. They came out and they just went right down. And, and the reason you see that time of possession only 307 was because defensively, they've stopped them every time and given the ball right back. Second and three for the Vikings on their 38-yard line. Brad Johnson has a lot of time, and his pass to Jake Reed is caught. Fine catch in the face of Craig Newsom, and a first down and a pickup of 15. Watch Jake Reed on the outside. You're going to get the cushion. Now you're playing. See how, see how Newsom is reading the quarterback? He's giving him the cushion, and then Reed just takes the cushion and takes it back outside. Reed leading the NFL and receiving yards coming into this game. A first down, Leroy Hoare. Fumbles. Packers recover. George Coons recovers for Green Bay. That was a powerful run by Hoare. And then they just ripped the ball out of there on him. I'm impressed with Leroy Horst. I mean, he's, he's got his game back. Watch him come flying right through here. Eugene Robinson, you got to get, get in there. But Reggie White got his right arm in there and stripped that ball out. And then Koontz was able to be able to flop on it. But Reggie White was the difference in the play on the strip. And Jim McMahon is going to come into the game for the quarterbacks of Packers. Each team has turned it over twice. And it's Green Bay ball on the 27th. Mike Holmgren told us yesterday the two people I'm concerned with most would be Favre and Reggie White. And now he's taken Favre out of the game. McMahon, first down at the 27, and Edgar Bennett recovers his own fumble and gets a couple of yards. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to JB at our box. Television Center. Dick and Matt, take a look at this 42-yard field goal by Jacksonville's Mike Hollis. Wouldn't you say it is their day? Yes, it's good. 19-10 Jacksonville. Bills 13-9 over Kansas City. Bills with the ball at the seven. Less than five to play there. Back to Dick and Matt. That was a doink. <laughs> that was a doink. But I didn't expect Kansas City. That would be tough up there to win in Buffalo. Meanwhile, Edgar Bennett going over 100 yards. 101 yards, 15 carries and a touchdown. Second down and six, Dorsey Levin. And Levin for the first down is pushed out of bounds, short of the 40 yard line that by Orlando Thomas. Dick, that was great, great patience. And I'll tell you what, we've had Lambeau leaps, we've had high jumpers, finger rolls. Watch the patience with Levin. Timmerman gets the block on Barnett. Now you got to go over him. There's no place to go. So he just jumps right over the top and picks up the first down. Hey, I, I like Dorsey Levin. I think this kid is really, really coming on. Holmgren likes him also, and he's integrating him more and more into this offense. He's playing in more offensive sets. He has 50 yards and eight rushes. He's got size. He's got speed. All of a sudden, the Packers have a running game. First down up to 39. Edgar Bennett back in. And Bennett, oh, nice having a 100-yard game, picks up a couple of more. And there's no quit in this Minnesota Viking defense, so that Griffith, Robert Griffiths came up, and he just lowers the move. See him shaking his head? William Henderson came up and took on the backer, and Griffiths saw it perfect and came up and just nailed it. There's the block right there by Henderson, and then, boom, right there. That's technically perfect. Head was in the right spot and just ran right through him. I don't know how many teams would want to play Minnesota next week in the playoffs. This is a good football team. I mean, things have kind of unraveled for them right now. They're playing good football. Second and eight from the 41. Out of the eye formation. Play action fake for McMahon. And his pass is caught by Mark Shimura. After a bobble, he holds on and gets another Green Bay first down into Minnesota territory. I want to remind you that the Cowboys and the Redskins, game two of our Fox doubleheader, Dallas is in, Washington is out, but it's the final game at RFK Stadium, and there is always a great battle between those teams.
Always has been, always will be, regardless of who's playing and what's at stake. You know, you look at Jim McMahon and you see that eye shield. And I'm going to tell you, you know, he's wearing that because he has a bad eye. But defensively, that is a problem because he can't read the quarterback's eye. Of the 49, Bennett. And Bennett gets a couple. Green Bay Packers only have to lose by 18 or less. No matter what Carolina did to get home field advantage throughout. So they will have the home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs. But they wanted to make a statement and win today. Beat the Vikings and finish big. Now the Packers would clinch home field advantage with a win or a Carolina loss yeah, or a you, Packer loss by less than You can take all this stuff away right now. They're not going to lose by 18. Yeah, right? This is done. <laughs> it's a Packers win right now. Second down and eight. McMahon going for Andre Risen downfield and covered by Corey Fuller. Andre Risen, the, the other thing is this secondary for the Minnesota Vikings has played well all game long. The difference in this football game has been the offensive line of the Green Bay Packers and their ability to run the football. Because they were able to run the football, the rest of that offense just opened wide up. Because what happened then, all of a sudden, Minnesota had to start making a couple more chances, take some blitzes. They got caught in man coverage with the Andre Rising touchdown. All because you had to shore up your front. We were tied 10-10 at halftime. The Packers have thoroughly controlled this game in the second half. Third down and eight. Hand off to Levin. Dorsey Levin. Close to another first down. Brett Favre, who left the game as Levin's clear grass from his helmet. And the way they're going, I would expect that they'd just run this one, try to get the first down right now with fourth and one. Barb uh, through for the day, 15 for 23, over 200 yards and three touchdown passes, giving him 39 for the season. That is the most in Green Bay history and the third most all-time touchdown passes in the season in the NFL. Coming off of an MVP year, when he lost his receivers in the middle of the season he was still able to keep the pace and go past of an mvp season last year you have to consider him again for the year he's had they're going to be short by a yard packers with only three losses this year to the vikings to dennis green early and then the kansas city and dallas mid-season green bay will kick it away leading 31 to 10 and 9 17 to go so craig hendrick will come on to boot it Camp Lee goes back for Minnesota. Fair catch at the 10 yard line. And that's where the Vikings will take over, trailing 31 to 10 here in the fourth quarter. Is coming. It looks like Ray Nitschke, who made that team, he's still got a lot of admirers here in Green Bay. Heck, he's, that guy's right in front of us, and he looks exactly like Nitschke. Including the padding and the shoulder pads. Right down to the glasses and the bald head. First down, Vikings on the 10-yard line. Brad Johnson gets it to Chris Carter, and the Carter is hit immediately by Wayne Simmons for a short gain of only two yards. I'll tell you, Dick, when you look at this defense today at the Green Bay Packers, the difference was their defensive line. Sean Jones played very well, and Gilbert Brown on the inside really held the point and forced things inside. Say, he's played outstanding today. Reggie White on the other side as well. We talked about Gilbert and how big he is and how strong he is in holding that point. And he loves to eat, but he has, he has something here called the Gilbert Burger. <laughs> Look, you know, you got your kid burger, you know, your little one, you eat that, that thing, it's not very big, and then you go, you get a teen burger, and it gets a little bit bigger, and then you grow up, you become a man, you have a man burger, but you know you've hit it big when you can eat a Gilbert burger, <laughs> and that's getting as much stuff as you can between two pieces of bread. 
You know, the, the Gilbert Burger, by the way, contains extra everything but no pickles. No pickles. Can't yeah. have pickles, right? He can put everything he's got. It's basically, it's a triple of everything you got. Flag is now. You talk about Gilbert and, you know, he's... Before the stop, ball start, number 62 on the outside. Jeff Christie, the Viking setter. Five yards, still second round. Yeah, you see, oh, Gilbert, he's got that triple of everything just thrown in there, that Gilbert burger. What he does is he orders 10 of them every Monday, and he brings it in for the rest of the defensive line. Now, Reggie White says to me that that is the sloppiest sandwich you've ever eaten. He said, but boy, is it ever good. Emily Post's etiquette book has not been read by that group. I don't, I don't think he knows who Emily Post is. I don't think so. But I did notice his little finger was up, so that's enough manners. Second and 13. Here's Jake Reed on the reception and out of bounds. Well, at least he had that little touch with the yeah, pinky. Keep the finger up and you're in good shape. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of having a little bit of fun with him, but he, he really has played extremely well. I'll tell you, we had, we had him right after we had Kansas City, after they had played them the following week, and and Grunhardt, the center, just said, man, I was sore till Wednesday. The, the beating that Gilbert Brown put on. Third down and four. Brown comes to the sideline. Under eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Pressure put on Brad Johnson, and Brad Johnson's pass off the fingertips. That's a nice ball. Reed. That is a nice ball. Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson's done pretty well here today. Watch what his ball throw. I mean, he's going up. The ball stone just a little bit out. Warren Moon, of course, has been out for the last five games. He's healthy now, but injury the last first couple of games. But I think the Vikings have their man now in Brad Johnson. Well, and time is going to tell how good he can be. But if this is any indicator, they're in great shape. Mitch Berger kicking and Desmond Howard back deep. And a fine kick by Berger. Here's Howard. Desmond Howard looking for an NFL record. One man to beat. And Hendrick, or Berger, the punter, makes the tackle on Desmond Hauer after a 47-yard punt return. Well, Desmond Howard wants that fourth touchdown. He wants to tie the NFL record. He has three right now, and he was off to the races. And I'll tell you, we talked about the confidence in that whole punt return team. It also comes down to confidence with the punter to make the tackle. And he does a great job of being able to make the play. You don't have to be pretty doing it. You just have to get him down. You know, the Viking players respect Berger because he made a couple of tackles last week in the win over Tampa Bay. So he's not afraid to get his nose dirty and into the play. Hey, Gilbert Brown has respect for a Berger, too. <laughs> As we've just seen. First down, Edgar Bennett. To about the 17 yard line. Dick, I, I've never seen the Green Bay Packers under Mike Holmgren play power football like this. I really haven't. I, they've gone right after them. And they've just, they've muddied themselves and bloodied the opposing nose, and they've kept on doing it. And that offensive line, again, they've done the job. Wilkerson being switched from right to left, and he got beat once for a sack, but he's done himself. A good job. And I think that's a major piece of the puzzle for these Packers, that left tackle position. And whoever the Packers have to play, their opponent's going to have to be wary and worry about something else now. Second and six. Here's Dorsey Levin. And Levin, Harlan Barnett grabs a hold, close to a first down. Packers won this game in the third quarter with three touchdowns on their first three possessions of that second half period and again I go back and, and say it again it was because they were running the football and then that set everything else up and Edgar Bennett's had himself a big day Dorsey Levins has had himself a big day and that man right there Brett Favre when that running game is going you have too many options with that arm he's going to kill you 39 is the number Brett Favre touchdown total third down and one Jim McMahon has been the quarterback the handoff is to Levin. He's going to score. And the Green Bay Packers winning, going away in this final regular season game. 
11 yard touchdown run for Levin. That's his second score of the game. That was 11 yard touchdown. 11 yard touchdown. The whole thing got set up by the block of William Henderson right at the point, and then Levin can just bump it right outside. Watch William Henderson right here at number 30. Right, boom, there's the block. See, nothing outside. A nice job by Tremor on the, on the outside backer, and like you said, an 11 yard touchdown. And Chris Jackie is aboard, and nothing but elation over on the Green Bay sideline, and they'll all be eating Gilbert Burgers tonight in Green Bay as the Packers have moved out in front now, 38 to 10 over Minnesota. I think I might like one of them myself. Allowed only two sacks and a season's high rushing, 195 yards for both Levins and Edgar Bennett. Two touchdowns as well. Wilkerson, the 10-year veteran who started at left tackle, and the rest of the group have been there all year. They've played very, very well today. Craig Hendrick kicking off. And it is taken by a lineman, and that's John Jerak, who actually is a former tight end, turned into lineman, and he brings it out to the 30. Timeout, we'll be right back. Footballs for the five touchdowns that the Packers have scored this afternoon. They're warmer than anyone in this stadium. Brad Johnson still at the helm, and Chris Carter trying to hold on. Could that'll bring up second down. This game is presented by Authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Green Bay Packers and the National Football League is. Strictly prohibited. Dick, you watch this Minnesota Viking team. And you see how the second half really went for the Green Bay Packers way. But this is a good football team. They're much better than they were in the middle of the season. Frankly, I think they're better than they were at the beginning of the season. Johnson loses it. And it's a free ball. And it's picked up by Sean Jones. And he'll go in for a touchdown. Now, let's see whether they... Now, I think Fahey was in the act of throwing the yeah. ball. Yeah, that's a third down. Red Cash was right on top of it, and it's a good call. His arm was going forward. No call at first was made as the officials watched the ball around. And now, Red, Cash Red Cashin's hit. job is to protect and watch the quarterback. You can see his arm is coming forward. He was hit, but he still got the arm forward. And Cashin is right on top of it. And this is what makes him... Such a good official. See how the arm's going? See, it's coming, and that's a good call. There's the hit, but he still tried to force it through. And Cashin waited until he was certain. Right there, you saw it at the end of that replay. Third down and 10. Johnson tries to get it out to Amp Lee, and that will bring up fourth down. Uh, in the second half, they've only able to, been able to throw the ball to their wide receivers down the field one time. And this is the reason why. They're just being physical with them, and they're not going to let them get open. And they've forced them to have to throw to their underneath cover. And if you can take Chris Carter out of the game, and three catches is nothing for him. Remember, he needed seven catches today to get to 100 receptions. And to match Jerry Rice is the only receivers in history to have 100 or more catches three straight years. Mitch Berger on the kick, and Desmond Howard will let the ball bounce out of bounds. So I'm sure Carter is going to remain in there to see if he can get that mark. He was one of pro football stars until an accident on the field left him completely paralyzed. No one thought he had a chance of recovery. The true story of how he came back, Rise and Walk, the Dennis Bird story on the Fox Tuesday night movie. That's a good story. Dennis Bird is doing very well right now. Packers and Edgar Bennett, one of the great weapons. The total yards, and this is only this half, 247 to 59 in favor of Green Bay and Bennett going over 100 yards for the first time this season. 
He's one of my favorite players. The guy always has a happy face. He does. Always a smile on his face. Travis Jervy has come in the game for the uh, Green Bay Packers and gets the handoff from Jim McMahon and picks up about four yards. Jervy getting his first chance in the backfield today for Green Bay. Hey, Travis Jervy might be one of the fast. Well, he is. He's one of the fastest guys on this football team. And he's also one of the funniest guys. I mean, his his roommate is Dorsey Levins. And Levins, he requests him. He said, I want to be with him because this guy says stuff all the time that it just makes me laugh. I mean, it just, just the other night they were talking about, he, one of his favorite things is the Weather Channel. He will sit and watch the Weather Channel for hours. Second and five at the 42. And give it to William Henderson, fullback. And he stopped for no gain. Four and a half minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. The Packers with 28 unanswered points here in the second half have rolled on in front of the Vikings 38 to 10. They're headed for home field advantage and a 13 and three record. And remember, only one other time have the Packers ever won 13 games in one season. You have to go back to 1962. There you see, 14 in the third, 14 here in the fourth. 13, third down and five. Jim McMahon. In relief for Brett Favre and Travis Jervy. Good speed as Matt said. We got a glimpse of it there and a first down in the Viking territory for the Packers and Jervy. Yeah, Jervy at the end was trying to stay in bounds, but he just kind of slid out. He knew he had to keep that clock moving. Watch how Jervy, when he gets to the corner, he hits that gear because he's got that great speed. Nice job by William Henderson on the block. And then he sees the gap in between Henderson and Wilkerson. And now he tries to stay in bounds, but the turf doesn't allow him to. Remember, right now, they've kept the coil. There's coils under this stadium, under the under the ground. And they've kept it on all game long. And if you look on the periphery, you can see where it's cold and where it's frozen and where the coils are. First and 10 at the 46. And here is Travis Derby. And spins away and he's down. Of course, they've resodded the field recently, Matt. Yeah, they spent $50,000 two weeks ago and put this side and see this side right here they put that in and and it's held up very very well now underneath this six inches below this are that there are coils and and they keep the field 65 degrees temperature now here's you can see right there there's the here's the old turf and here's the new turf this is 50 grand right here there's 50k sitting right there and there's <laughs> nothing like a couple cents down here second and ten you can slip on a couple of cents. Second down and ten. Thank you for your cents right there. Henderson gets a couple, brings up third down and long. Common sense is what I'm saying off today. See right here, you see this right here, that line? If you look from the outside, it's frozen on this side. And on this side right here, this is 65 degrees field temperature. But on the outside of this, it's frozen. And it's like ice out there. And so they keep this side, they keep this on all game long. And so the field never freezes. But on the outside, like you can see all this in here, all that over there, that's frozen solid. And they had to cut two and a half inches of grass this morning. Right, off that off that seated, um, solid part in the middle. You're an expert on grass with your farm and everything. You know about that stuff. Yeah, I, I know it's good to chew on. Third down and seven, Travis Derby. Gets inside the 40-yard line and close to the first down marker as we get down to the two-minute warning here at Lambeau Field. Packers 38, Vikings 10. We'll be right back. The Packers winning today will go 13-3. and three. They'll have home field advantage. Last time and the only other time they won 13 games was in 62 under Vince Lombardi. They were the NFL champions, and their only loss that season, Matt, was on Thanksgiving Day to the Detroit Lions, who happened to sack Bart Starr 11 times, the only setback the Pack had that year. It'll be fourth and inches, and the Packers going for it with two minutes to go in the game. 
cornerback sneak after Favre has slipped, but he appears to have the yard. McVay Jim McMahon, I should say. You look at their three losses, and you see when they lost them. And they lost back-to-back -back games. First of all, they've already avenged the first one with the Minnesota Vikings. They've taken care of that business. And then they went ahead and they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs and looked very bad doing it. They were hurt, and then they went down to Dallas and got beat again. So who can beat them here in Lambeau? I think the one team that they really have to be afraid of are the San Francisco 49ers. Because I think the San Francisco 49ers have been in big games. They're good on the road and they've gotten better from the last time they played it. Remember, when they played them on that Monday night game here, it was a great game. It was a coin flip game. And and the Packers, the Packers oh, beat it. Travis Jervy running up the middle. You're right, Matt. The we're Packers beat him, but there were a couple of controversial plays in that game. There really were. And then you know, the other one is to talk about, uh-oh, and Sean Jones looks like he's, he's been a little more sneaky. Disguising it. Yeah. The other one is the Dallas Cowboys. But if the Dallas Cowboys come into Lambeau Field, the way they're playing right now, the Packers will beat them. And that's been the one team the Packers have not been able to beat, of course, in Dallas. Next year, the Packers will play. There. Here it comes. Here it comes. That was, oh, a weak that was a horrendous effort. That was weak. It was bad. <laughs> and he didn't even feel it. Uh, he, had, see, he knew it, though. You see, he had that. He had his collar up, and he was waiting. <laughs> well, that'll do it. The Packers will have the home field advantage. And the Vikings going to the playoffs for the fourth time in five years under Dennis Green. May end up playing Dallas next week with the Eagles winning their game. Minnesota will drop the seed, and it looks like the Vikings will play at Dallas in a wild card. Nick, I'm going to tell you this right now. The Minnesota Vikings, the way they're playing, they can go to Dallas and beat them. I guarantee that they can beat them in Dallas. That could be the team they're going to play. 38-10, to 10, the final score. We'll be back right here in the Lambo.